Good afternoon, evening, morning. Welcome to a midweek. It's Wednesday. Wednesday just after the close here in the States. Um, I was having some technical issues on Sunday, so I couldn't do the week ahead. So I thought we'd go through a few things. Uh, had some you know, decent moves the past three days. So when we get right into it, uh, here's the S&P. This is the FIBO we've been waiting for, 29.30. You can see here we closed just above it, actually pretty much right on it today. Um, there was a decent sized market on closing balance. I think it was two yards and that was expected. Um, that's kind of what we're expecting. Um, somewhere between 30 and 60 billion of rebalancing um, you know, leading up to tomorrow's month end, uh, which will be one of the largest, I think it will be the largest ever, where they're selling stocks, buying bonds. Now, looks like they started this today, um, you know, maybe even a bit on, I don't remember what they did on Monday, but <clears throat> bottom line is some of this is, uh, some of this flow has probably already gone through the market. Uh, so next stop, is really 3100 this next fib uh there's a the 200 day you can't see here is it comes in around 3004 and uh in previous bear market rallies back in the early in 2000 and then again and i believe it was in 08 or 09 a couple times in 08 um we rallied up to the 200 day and then were rejected um you know the positive news today was uh, before the market opened, Gilead had come out with some news, uh, positive results on their remezavid and uh, whatever. Um, that got things really going to the upside. Um, you know, we're still not convinced. That this, listen, this is not a vaccine. It's still early in the testing. Um, it sounds like if uh, things go well, they could get this fast-tracked uh, by the FDA in like almost immediately um, for use of, of the, of the uh, therapeutic in people that are hospitalized. You know, so the market is, you know, I was looking at some of the CTA positioning and the risk parity positioning from one of the banks and we had some pretty low levels of equity long exposure. We know for a fact several of the CTAs needed to buy above anywhere between 2900 and 2935. So I would imagine you've seen some of that buying the past few hours. And we did get the close um, over, uh, over 2935. So, um, I think some of that systematic flow is going into the market and you know now with all the stimulus now i'm getting worried that this just keeps going higher um you know due to lack of participation in this recent uptrend it doesn't seem like anyone's got it um people are just kind of chasing their tails so you know as we speak here the s and p's are up another 20 handles, taking out the intraday high, and we are closing, or we had, yeah, we're closing in 30 minutes. Um, so, you know, I'd say 3,300 in S&Ps in the next areas. Let's take a look at, um, you can take a look at NASDAQ. We'll draw that same FIB. You know, the, the, the main, the main, swing that this market is following you can see here closed above this and uh, nasdaq is now trading 90 80. Um, i want to say that's up 100 handles since these earnings came out facebook beat uh tesla even beat uh microsoft beat uh who else? There was another big one that came out. Um, Qualcomm, I think, beat. So, a couple of big, big boys all beat. We've got Amazon tomorrow. I'll be watching that. 
Um, let's take a look at gold and we'll look at metals and then we'll get into the currencies and I'm going to wrap it up. We're just going to be a, just a quick one here. Gold's not doing a whole lot. The gold, gold is weakening. Um, it's been underperforming silver now um, for a bit, which you know speaks to more of a, re a inflationary type environment. Um, and we all know, you know, silver is the high beta um, metal. So keep an eye on on silver's performance with. Um, Against gold, let me see if I can do do this here. X A U S D divided by X A G U S D. Okay, there's a gold silver ratio. It looks uh, let's look at it on a line. Here you can see you can see how you know gold was leading the way up then got hit harder than silver and then it kind of flatlined here and based in april and now gold's weakening again versus silver so this this speaks of inflation um which is why we've been preaching about owning you know gold mining stocks Silver mining stocks, silver junior miners, um, XME, you know, that, that sort of thing. And uh, we think there's going to be, you know, over the long term, we think there'll be a massive outperformance in these. Here's XME. This is the metals and mining ETF. You can see what this has done. Um, it's now breaking out. It is going to fill some gaps we have a short-term target we got started getting bullish this in the 1718 area um we got a gap up here to 2094 which got very close to filling another one just above there 22 so you know we, we can see this in the kind of that 23 to 25 range um pretty quickly so Again, that is the you know more of a reflation type play. Um, let's see what copper did. Copper, <laughs> the copper was heavy this morning and turned out having a, a pretty nice day. You know, a lot of these patterns where you've had this you know the big spike down, then the uptrend, then we had another dip. They're kind of these cup and handle type patterns, and you can see where we're breaking out. So. You know, copper for us has got, you know, 260, 270. Um, let's take a look at some of the currencies real quick. Um, you know, Dollar Max continues to sell off. Um, you know, kind of the wave down here, then the new high, then another one, and a lower high. So you got a nice kind of head and shoulders pattern here, and the neckline, you know, Depends on how you want to draw it. I'll draw a uptrend line you know we're pretty much right on it and if you want to be a little bit more conservative you could probably wait for this horizontal break so somewhere between <laughs> 2370 2327 or 2325 I guess that is um, that's a pretty, that's a pretty good head and shoulders formation, and that you know a weaker dollar goes back to our reflation theme. Dollar yen since the BOJ has just stayed heavy, weaker dollar. Um, we are expecting dollar selling tomorrow in a month end. Maybe they've been front running this a little bit today. Uh, cable, really ugly day yesterday, but then saved itself. And this looks like it's going back up to these highs. Um, you know, we've had a nice retracement. Dollar Canada, I know guys are trying to fade this thing like 100, 100 handles higher, buying it. You know, now we're getting into what looks like, you know, a break of these lows. So it's similar to Dollar Max where, you know, breaking through that mid-April low um, 
could yield more downside in dollar CAD. Uh, Euro dollar, this thing's just a pain in the ass. You know, indecisive bar here on Monday. Tuesday, reversal bar. Um, get rid of these fibs. Uh, I don't know. ECB tomorrow. Downtrend line here. Dollar selling month end. You know, maybe you get. Yeah, it's not even a line. Can't even draw it. Um, you know, maybe this one. Maybe the shorter one from the beginning of the month or end of, end of March, I believe that was. Yeah. Um, well, you know, we kind of closed over it. Um, Sorry, got a phone call late in the day here. Um, all right, so there's Euro, ECB tomorrow. Don't forget about that. Aussie's looking good, closed on its highs. Um, you know, we've been long this for a while. Still like it higher. Um, the Fibos, we took out the, just a massive range this year. We took out the two thirds. So this is going, our target for this is this old high. This is interesting how it's this three quarter Fibo. And you remember the flash crash day in Asia, the 9th of March. Um, that was the high that day, some old lows. So we're going there, be there by the end of the week. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to leave it there. So good luck. We got ECB in the morning and we will, you'll hear from us, uh, you know, on the London Open. All the best. Cheers.